This right here is surely one of Fanatec's most popular and successful products. It's the cheapest GT style wheel they do, and whilst in some ways it definitely feels lower end, it is stacked with almost everything you need and it only begs the question why they haven't made more like it. Being one of my and many others favourite Fanatec wheels to date, allow me to give you the guided tour of the McLaren GT3 V2. Before we get into it, a text-based version of this video is available on my site, link in description. And if after watching this review you do head on to buy, by using the link also provided within the description to visit Fanatec's site, you'll help support further videos and thank you to those who've done so along the way. It makes a big difference. This wheel was not sent by Fanatec for review, it's my own unit. This is a replica GT wheel very closely modelled on those found in the McLaren MP412C and 650S GT3 cars from years gone by. It has a perfect 300mm width which is my ideal sweet spot, very low weight which is perfect for lower power bases, orange anodized metal paddle shifters, dual clutch analog paddles, a moderate spread of buttons, switches and dials, an onboard display, albeit a small and limited one, but most importantly, it's priced low and is compatible with PC, Xbox and PlayStation when paired with the right Fanatec wheelbase. It's not the most refined wheel out there, but for a fair price, you unlock almost all the abilities you'll need if you're into road racing with GT or Formula cars. Because of its lower budget construction, at least relatively speaking, it's perfect for people in the earlier stages of sim racing. Although I do see many folks stating they prefer this wheel over others that they own and just carried on using it. Maybe you really like the idea of having a replica wheel so you can play pretend racing drivers even better. I can totally understand that because I too would much sooner have something with a little bit of real racing spirit bottled up in it. I am definitely a replica lover. I know these are the things that will draw you to the McLaren wheel because that's exactly what led me to buy one, but it just so happens there are some distinct pros and cons to this wheel as well. The body or chassis is built primarily from plastic, straight away this is mainly how you will know it's a lower priced wheel and this is where the divide begins between those who can see past that and those who can't stomach the force of a plastic steering wheel. You'll already have a good idea which camp you're in and it's just a question of how much you want to spend. Plastic it may be, but it is perfectly sturdy, and provided you combine it with the appropriate level of quick release, can be used with the highest power Fanatec bases like the DD1, DD2, not just the CSL DD. I haven't encountered any reports or evidence of a McLaren wheel cracking or failing, and it's been available for long enough for that sort of thing to appear in the news if it did, so I consider it safe. The carbon weave effect infused into the shell does a good job of giving it a semi-convincing finish. The grips are made of quite firm rubber, some of you might find them to be on the narrower or thinner side. Most of you won't find any issue, but if you have hands so large that you are a hand double for Shrek, then just keep that in mind. That 300mm width I referred to earlier is wider than the Formula Wheel's 270mm width, and it makes a big difference. It's one of the biggest reasons a McLaren wheel is so broadly usable. In my eyes, 300mm is the perfect balance between being too small and imprecise and being too big and cumbersome. It really is a strong plus point for the McLaren and something that differentiates it from that smaller Fanatec Formula wheel. The only metal you'll find on here, besides potentially your quick release, is the shifter paddle. I say paddle, singular, because that's exactly what it is. A long, thin, orange coloured cast metal piece that pivots in the middle, giving you a lever either side of the wheel. It's quite quirky. Shifting is poppy and punchy, with a very short travel, shorter than most you'll ever use, which as I'll mention later, can be a matter of taste whether you like it or not. The dual clutch paddles sitting beneath the shifters are made of plastic as well, with their strengthening honeycomb structure open and visible from the front, but they don't flex, they're smooth to operate and moderately sprung. Dual clutch paddles are absolutely vital in races where you start off a line and you don't tend to see them very often on a wheel of this price, further adding to the value for money you do get. This was the wheel that introduced me to dual clutches and changed my standing starts forever. In addition, those dual clutch paddles can be switched to different modes, so instead of using them as dual clutches, you can use them for brake and throttle, handbrake, or an analog axis that you bind to whatever you want. 
For sim racers with disabilities, for example, this feature has been a bit of a lifeline. I know of multiple racers that have used the McLaren's dual clutch paddles as throttle and brake in much the same way you'd use the triggers on the back of a controller. Just a nifty little extra ability this wheel has. Both the shifters and clutches have a knurled surface for your fingers to grip onto. The levers themselves are slightly further back than your average paddle with no adjustment options. It can sometimes feel like you're only just hanging onto the paddles by your fingertips at times. Unless you were a hand double for Shrek, in which case you'll be fine. There are buttons aplenty, none of which I know the technical term for so here it goes. You got 7 plain old buttons, 2 big poppy pushers, 2 flicky up and downers, 2 dials that go all the way around, 1 dial that only goes a bit way around because it's actually for changing what the clutch paddles do, and 1 noodly switch that can be twiddled, pushed and nudged. There are enough buttons here to cover almost everything that you need unless you're an advanced driver that loves advanced cars and uses them to an advanced level. The button cap and sticker set is also compatible with this wheel so you could pop the standard Xbox buttons off and replace them with custom items if you like. However the wheel does come with this modest sticker pack and if you look closely on the wheel you can see little markers that help you place where the stickers can go. The dials are positive and satisfying to use. If you've got them bound to something like traction control or fuel maps, then they do have that cool little quality that makes you feel like you're actually doing something of consequence when you use them. The screen on board is only a tiny thing, but it's plenty clear enough to navigate force feedback settings easily via the wheel, showing full text as you do so, which is far easier to decode than the LCD displays you get on many other Fanatec wheels. Once again, this is the cheapest one to get this clearer display. In terms of actually using it for driving, the wheel does have some important strengths that will matter to you and are definitely worth weighing up. The big one is the low weight of a McLaren wheel and where that weight is, there's not much to it and most of it is focused closer to the centre. That makes it an agile, low inertia wheel, one of the best I've used for allowing the most amount of force feedback detail and liveliness from lower powered wheelbases especially. Here's what I mean by that. On this 5Nm CSL DD, a relatively low power base, the force feedback feels much more alive and exciting when I use the McLaren wheel than it does when I use a heavier wheel with more meat on the bones. This means that if you are using a CSL DD or GT DD Pro, be it with or without the boost pack for more power, the McLaren wheel is possibly the best wheel to pair with it to feel the most exciting and responsive forces through the wheel. Striking curbs and slicing through track features feels that bit sharper and the race cars you're using feel that bit more brutal. There is a trade-off to this but that's coming later. The explanation as to why the forces feel more intense is simple. In general, the heavier the steering wheel, the slower and less detailed the force feedback will feel as a result because the forces are dampened by having to move extra weight. It's just physics at work. Like how a small boat feels every wave, whereas a big tanker will cruise through them like a cloud. The high power bases can pretty much throw any wheel around like it's nothing, they don't have this problem. But the mini bases, like the CSL DD, can't and you will feel the force feedback getting duller and duller the heavier the wheel is that you use. The McLaren wheel gives you the most raw, unfiltered, undampened force feedback of anything I've used on a Fanatec system. Of course, you might find it a bit too lively and busy, but you can add weight and damping to your force feedback settings to stick some of that back in. What you can't do is magically remove weight and damping if your wheel is heavy to begin with, so this is a freedom you do have with a lighter wheel. I would say though that the lighter the wheel, the less convinced your brain is that you're driving a real car. It just seems to know that the thing you're holding onto has less inertia and mass than a real steering wheel should. It's a twisted compromise. By using a lightweight wheel, you feel much more force feedback and intensity, but it also feels slightly less convincing somehow as a result. Now, there are definitely a couple of things about this wheel that are divisive. Not all are necessarily weaknesses, but can split people on taste, preference and opinion. Firstly, the two big P and N buttons are way harder to press than all the other buttons on the wheel, to the point where if all of the other buttons took this much pressure to activate, it would probably render this wheel near useless, you'd get sick of it. Some of you might love this, having two big beefy buttons, but I personally avoid binding anything actually important to these because in order to guarantee that I press them down correctly, I almost have to punch them. 
I love the way they look and just hate the way they feel. Pushing these feels like pushing someone's eyeballs into the back of their heads but that was my old life. Secondly, the shifter action, although short and punchy, also has a slight mushness about it. This can bother some people enough to lead them to buy shifter paddle mods, and I do understand. I have definitely felt better and more satisfying shifter actions. The best way to describe it is that on almost every wheel I've ever used, the fear of miss shifting or double shifting has never been a thing. But on a McLaren wheel, something about this shifting action doesn't fully activate that clear shifting feeling in my mind that I kind of crave. And so I find myself almost exaggerating my shifter pulls a tiny bit just to be on the safe side. I think it's because the paddles pivot from the center point of the wheel which is quite far away, combined with a very short throw, combined with a fairly high activation force. Some of you will think this shifter feels excellent, some of you will hate it. Most of you though, like me, will just accept it and never really feel too strongly about it. Thirdly, there's no rev lights at all. We all enjoy rev lights, even though we maybe don't really use them in practice, they are part of your sim racing environment that kinda reaches out to you in the real world. It's about immersion and theatre. It helps convince you of your experience. I suppose it had to be some compromise to keep the cost within its limit. This is definitely one of those compromises. Lastly, the buttons can be prone to rattling under high forces. This is because the buttons have a tiny bit of free play, so any sharp knocks or rapid vibrations can cause the buttons to slap around a bit and cause some noise. I saw someone describe this as like shaking a box of Tic Tacs. Now it's not that bad by any means, and most of you will be using headphones and won't notice it, but there will be some of you that don't and will, so I'm mentioning it. Someone felt strongly enough to fix theirs by taking the faceplate off and padding the buttons so that they have no free play, and the difference is clear. So there's always that option. All in all though, the McLaren wheel is popular and well liked for good reason. It has pretty much every feature that any GT or Formula enthusiast would need and doesn't cost mega bucks. It's the perfect starter wheel, which pairs well with the lower power wheelbases that you're likely to have at the start. And the fact that it's a pretty close replica of a real GT3 wheel is also a major draw. If Fanatec had created more of these for the other GT manufacturers for around the same price, they would be unstoppably popular. It's so it's a shame they seem to stop at just this one. Just imagine if they'd gone on to make an equivalently cheap unit for the Porsche, for example. It'd be a hot seller, just like this. I'd definitely have one. It's not the flashiest or the most impressive wheel in terms of materials used, but that's a question of what you compare it to, and at the end of the day, it's priced right for what it is, even now. For sure, if it's your first steering wheel after using an entry-level Logitech or Thrustmaster, then this is going to feel pretty advanced. I'd say it's a safe bet that everyone who has had this McLaren wheel pass through their hands either still uses it, or looks back on it fondly as a really capable wheel for the money that made their earlier time in sim racing more enjoyable and interesting. The only people that won't be impressed with it are those with deep pockets and discerning tastes that are already further along their sim racing journey than what is being targeted here. Like a Honda Civic with a V8, so long as you don't care too much about the packaging, you'll have a good time. And that's it, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or thoughts on the McLaren V2, or you own one and have some points you think people should know, then by all means head to the comments, I do often answer them. If you found this useful then leave a like and subscribe for more like this, it also has a real impact on how far videos like this go, so thank you for that. And don't forget to use the link in the description if you do go on to buy, it helps me out. Cheers again.